Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be talking about K-pop groups that specifically debuted in 2021 and 2022, and I'll be sharing certain aspects of each of these groups that I'm not the biggest fan of. One of the biggest things in K-pop is how the industry really likes to push the quote-unquote perfect image onto their idols and groups. And I think this image holds up pretty well if your knowledge of these groups stays at a surface level. But once you dive a little bit deeper, it's actually not that hard to point out things that these groups can improve upon. And that's what I'm going to be doing. Obviously, I'm not going to be petty or hateful or anything. I'm not going to say like, oh, this idol is the problem with this group because that's there's just no point in doing that. This is mostly just going to be constructive criticism. And even if you disagree with what I say, hopefully you can at least understand where I'm coming from. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you all so much for 18,000 subscribers, by the way. And without further ado, let's talk about group number one. So first off we have Kepler, and even though I enjoy Kepler's music, one thing that I will say is that I'm not the biggest fan of their raps. It's been said a million times before, but I do think that Kepler is one of those groups where whoever creates their music thinks that they need to put a rap section in every song, but Kepler's producers take it a step further and they've added multiple rap sections into both of their title tracks. And I think most of them sound a little bit out of place. Something that I've noticed is that a lot of Kepler's rap sections come with an instrumental change too, where the music in the back background for the rap section specifically will sound different from the entire rest of the song. Some examples that come to mind are Hikaru's rap in the second verse of Wada Da and Dion's rap in the second verse of Up. I can definitely appreciate where the producers are coming from with this approach because it does add a sense of contrast within the music. But I think the examples that we've seen so far have contrasted a little bit too much and definitely don't heighten the amount that I enjoy these songs. Now, as for what I would do to fix this, I mean, there's the obvious solution of just making their rappers sing. For one, Dayan literally sang one of the choruses in Up, so we know that she's a fantastic vocalist. And although Hikaru isn't the most groundbreaking vocalist ever, I don't think she would stand out in a bad way compared to the rest of the members if she decided to just start singing. However, I did want to suggest maybe a second solution and bring up the idea of limiting the amount of rap into their songs to just one section. Wadada literally had three, and Up had like two and a half, and the only reason why I feel like it's such a glaring issue for Kepler is because there's so much rap in their music. If we just limited their songs to one rap section, it would not be nearly as big of a problem as I feel it is right now, and I would have no problems with the group as a whole. So personally, if Kepler did any of these two things, I would be completely fine with them and would have nothing bad to say about them at all, but for right now, I think Kepler has too much rapping, and now let's move on to the next group. So next up for this video, we're going to be talking about Billy. And disclaimer right now, this is going to be more of a rant and speculation section more than anything because I don't have any actual problems with Billy themselves. However, I am scared that I'm going to have some problems with Billy in the near future because I'm kind of scared that they want to do a concept change for their next comeback. Now, I don't want this to happen at all. I think that Billy found what works for them during Ginga Minga Yo era, and this sort of quote unquote quirky and all over the place concept that they have right now is what they should stick to, in my opinion. And maybe I'm just being paranoid, but I think they might want to go in the girl crush route in the near future. Within the past two months, the girls have done two covers of intense boy group songs, those being Kick It by NCT 127 and Tiger Inside by Super M. And maybe I'm just being crazy and delusional, but this is eerily reminding me of what Luna did in 2019. 19, when they released Butterfly, my favorite full group title track from them, and then started doing a lot of boy group covers later on in the year, such as Cherry Bomb by NCT 127. In retrospect, I think this was them trying to show off that they can do a more intense concept, and made it so that people weren't caught too off guard when they suddenly changed to a girl crush concept with the release of So What. And I'm kind of scared that this is the exact same thing that Billy is doing. I mean, Butterfly and Ginga Migio are some of my all-time favorite K-pop songs ever, and instead of switching up their concept entirely, I would prefer if Billy just stuck with what they have now. But with what they're currently doing, I'm just seeing way too many parallels with Luna's concept change, and it's just freaking me out a little bit. Hopefully I'm wrong about this. Let me know what you think of my speculation in the comment section. Let me know if I'm just like being crazy. But I did think it would be interesting to share my theory. And now let's move on to the next group. Bye. 
So next up we're going to be talking about NMIX, and my biggest problem with them is that I think they're a little bit too experimental. I know one of their marketing strategies was to intentionally make their debut one of the most polarizing songs ever in order to get people to talk about them, but I really do not think that this was necessary at all. I mean, this was very obviously shock advertising, and I understand what JYP was trying to do, but the thing is, I don't know why they needed to employ this strategy of shock advertising when they're from JYP. For those who don't know, shock advertising is doing something controversial in order to get people to talk about what you're trying to sell, and with shock advertising, you're intentionally risking falling out of the good graces with a lot of your intended audience in exchange for a lot of more people talking about you and knowing who you are. But NMIX never needed to make this risk because they come from JYP. Because they have big four privilege, people are going to be talking about them no matter what, and I don't understand why JYP thought it would be worth it to make so many people uninterested in the group as a whole by giving them such a weird debut song if people were going to be talking about them no matter what in the first place. I'm probably biased because I really do not enjoy OO, and I know JYP did something similar with ITZY with Dala Dala, but what JYP did with NMIX's debut seems kind of like just a step too far, and and I think their debut would have been way better if they just did something a little bit safer. I think OO is a huge fail of doing something experimental, and it seems like JYP didn't know what they were doing, so I hope with NMIX's next comeback they do something a little bit more general public friendly. I know a lot of people did enjoy OO, but it wasn't for me, so I hope they don't continue with that kind of concept. Next up for this video, we have Tempest, which is a boy group under the same company as Everglow. And although they only have one mini album, I will say that I think their biggest weakness right now is their B-sides. I think their debut title track, Bad News, is the best debut title track of this year so far, but I didn't save or enjoy a single one of the B-sides on their mini album. They were all kind of chill and down-tempo songs, which I can enjoy every once in a while, but they all kind of sounded the same to me. And the biggest problem that I had with them is that they didn't really stand out in any way, and nothing Nothing about them was special. They had same song syndrome, if you will. I think with the group's b-sides, especially in their rookie years, they really need to establish what kind of musical identity they want to have. And right now, I don't know what Tempest's musical identity is. They need some b-sides with a lot more personality so that I can really get into the group as a whole, but right now, in my opinion, they don't, and that's where I think they're lacking. Next we have Ive, and I don't have any glaring problems with Ive, but I do think we need more music from them. So what I wrote down is that we don't want any more single albums. They've been around for 7, almost 8 months, and they only have 4 songs to their name, and most groups have more than that the second they debut. I just think there's a big lack of musical content from them, and considering Starship is one of the biggest companies right now and they're not short on money at all, I don't understand what the downside of giving them a mini album would be. Every single one of their other groups debut with at least a mini, so I don't understand what's so special about Ive where they can't get the same, and it's almost just like Starship knows they can get away with only giving them two songs per comeback and they're just doing it because they can. It makes their management seem lazy, as if they only want to do the bare minimum, and though their four songs are good, I don't know why we have to be limited to only four. If you have any ideas or speculation as to why Starship is doing this, please leave them in the comment section below, I'm actually pretty interested, because I can't come up with anything other than they're lazy. And I think us, as fans, have been pretty robbed of them having more than one b-side per release. Second to last, we have Purple Kiss, and the only problem that I have with them is that their company decided to have them release Mem Mem. I literally have nothing against any of the members, I think they're all cool, and at the time before they released Mem Mem, they were actually my favorite rookies. But that is one of my least favorite K-pop songs, or just songs in general of all time, and because Mem Mem is their most recent era, my interest in the group has gone as far down to the point where I've kind of just dropped them out of my stand list entirely. I will absolutely regain a lot of my interest in them if their next comeback is good, but right now I just don't care about them as much as I used to, and Mem Mem is the only problem I have with them that's caused this to happen.
So finally for this video, we have Le Seraphim, who I just recently added to my stand list. And my biggest thing with them is that I feel like their music so far hasn't really allowed the members to showcase their vocals. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that both Yunjin and Chaewon are pretty decent vocalists at the very least, and I kind of agree with the group of people who think that their songs need a few more high notes in them. I've seen a lot of people say that they can't really get into Le Seraphim because they think their music lacks a certain sense of oomph to it, and I've seen some of these same people say that the reason why that is is because they don't have any high note ad libs during their final choruses. I don't know whether or not not including those is a stylistic choice or if they're just scared of maybe not being able to perform it live, but whatever it is, at least for the studio versions, I don't see any reason for them to not show off a little bit more vocals. As far as I know, they're very much so capable of pulling them off, and it would be a good way to have all of their tracks have a little bit better of a conclusion, because right now, it seems like they all end kind of abruptly because there's not much of a climax climax in the final 30 seconds. And that is going to conclude this video. I definitely didn't include every rookie out there, mostly because I didn't have a lot to say about all of them and I wasn't sure if people would be interested, but if you want a part 2, let me know and I'll see what I can do. If you enjoyed the video and what I had to say, consider leaving a like, and if you want to see more content, consider subscribing. Thank you all so much for watching, and without further ado, I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks so much, and peace out.